first up, we've seen you in a bit of a, a different role at, at City, especially over the weekend, moving into that attacking midfield role. How have you enjoyed it? Yeah, it's good. Um, you know, I've played it a bit in the preseason uh, leading up to this this year. Um, you know, it's different. It's a different role in terms of um, you know runs I make and obviously being more involved in the middle of the park in the defensive sense as well. Um, but yeah, I've been enjoying it, and um, you know, it sort of gets me in a situation where I'm in more of the sort of battle in the midfield, and um, yeah, it was a uh, was nice. That's something where you maybe look to Arnie and go, oh, I've got, I've got this extra string to my bow. Do you try and translate that into soccer at times or is it life out on the winger up top for you there? Oh, look, I didn't really think too much about it. Um, obviously, um, you know, it's always nice if you can, you know, play a few roles. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we have great players in, in those positions in the national team. Um, but I'm always available um, if needed. Well, Lex... Joey Lynch here, mate. I don't think we've spoken since you've arrived at City, but um, I hope you're well. It's 13 days now until the Socceroos squad is being named. What are the nerves? What are the feelings like? I mean, one would think you're on the plane, but how are you feeling, you know, a fortnight out from the squad being named? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Um, I think, you know, after that qualification, uh, the most important thing for me was to think about trying to get as fit as I possibly could and um, having a good start to the season. Um, obviously, we only have the six games leading into um, going into the camp. So, you know, I don't think about it too much. Obviously, it's, you know, not too far around the corner, but, you know, we still have three games here, so it still seems like it's it's quite a while away. Um, and, yeah, um, I've always been the type of person that doesn't like to think too much ahead. Um, it's important to, to stay healthy. Um, obviously, you know, anything can happen and if you pick up an injury, then um, it's an issue. So just trying to do all the right things to stay fit and also um, do well here at, at Melbourne City and um, so far so good uh, for the club and for the for the team. Um, and my mindset's still on that to, uh, you know, have the, the following three games as well uh, a success. How much has it helped being maybe more settled at City now, Matt? Last year when those qualifiers were happening overseas, there was in and out of hubs. I know the time where you stayed in Melbourne to try and settle here. How good are you feeling now going into this pretty crucial period? Yeah, def ago, yeah definitely more settled. Obviously, um, you know, I was pretty chaotic when I first arrived last season. Um, I think, you know, when I arrived into the quarantine, that was when sort of COVID kicked off again in Australia and you know, it was a roller coaster of you know doing everything, settling in, getting a place. Um, it was all tough in those conditions. So you know, going into this season, you know, I'm settled. Um, you know, all my kids are, are settled in in daycare, and life's just more fluent and normal. So you know, you, sometimes you don't really think about it, like um, that it could you know affect you mentally. Um, and at that back then, I, I you know I didn't think it, I try to you know keep it away from from football. Um, but yeah. Um, definitely uh, more settled in the sense that you know the family settled uh, here in Melbourne, and you know we're li we're just living everyday life um, to according yeah. How difficult was it to you know find your feet again back here in Melbourne? Because obviously the high level headline is you're returning home, but you'd spent so long in Europe and Germany that that was you know probably more home at that point. What was it like reintegrating back into Melbourne? Yeah, obviously, like you said, I was away for a very long time. So, um, you know, coming back, it was like a fresh start. I had to, you know, start from, from zero, really. Um, and I guess, you know, there was obviously expectation coming back, um, being away for so long and being a player that's been in the national team for, for a long time now. Um, but, you know, I, I just, uh, I knew what was what was coming and that was the challenge I wanted to, to take. Um, you know, I, I definitely, when I signed for Melbourne City, wanted to come back to, uh, you know, be successful and, and win things. And obviously coming back, they had already, you know, won the, the championship uh, the previous year and the stands were set. And, and that's what that's sort of the environment I wanted to come, come back into. And um, I think, you know, it was a... Even though we didn't, you know, get the get the result on the last day. Um, you know, I think we can be very proud of last season in terms of, 
how we went through the, throughout the whole uh, regular season and also, um, you know, the, the performances we had in the Asian Champions League. So, um, you know, we were shy by one game, but um, ultimately, overall, I think it was a successful first season. Is it hard? It's a bit of a weird one, um, Matt, that you do have a World Cup so early in a, in a season from a player's point of view. I mean, how do you go about uh, mentally preparing for that? You, you know, you're used to having a whole campaign under your belt and a big, long, fatiguing season, and then all of a sudden this one's upon you before you know it. Yeah, it's different. Obviously, it's the first time ever that it's occurred. Um, I guess you can see it in different ways um i'm sure for european um leagues it's it can be quite demanding because they you know they're smashing out a lot of games bef- before the world cup um for us we're, we're lucky enough that you know we have a break um and we have these six games before leading up and it's just in the regular week we're not you know smashing out games during the week so i guess you could see it as a positive in the sense that um you know we should we have we haven't had to deal with a long season and um you know going into a tournament fatigued um the only you know downside is obviously you know when you have it over the the middle of the year um you know last world cup we had a almost like a three three week four week uh, mini preseason to get ourselves fit so it's it's up to the players now to you know get themselves fit at their clubs and um you know get themselves in the best possible shape to uh to perform in the in those games Arnie's spoken so much about um, fitness, like you just mentioned there. I mean, you'll have that half dozen games under your belt and, and you've played every minute uh, that you could so far. You, you, you're generally a pretty fit bloke to begin with. How, are you confident when you get to, to Doha that you'll have enough in the tank to compete at a World Cup, given the, the, the calibre of players that you're going to be facing? Yeah, I think um, you know each week it's getting... Um, I'm feeling better and better. Um, you know, we had a couple of friendlies in the preseason, but you know, friendlies, no, um, nothing compared to a you know a proper um, fixture. So um, definitely, you know, from game one, you know, sort of fatiguing towards the end of the game to the last two games, it's, it, I can feel like I'm getting stronger and, and being able to see out the games. Um, so three more games, um, all goes well. Um, stay healthy, and um, I think definitely I'll be I'll be in great shape. Do you look too at the the sort of what else is going on with your teammates around around the world? You know, Kai trying to come back. There was a great social clip the other day of Harry Suter back and yelling at people at Stoke in another twenty three game, and the like that you're thinking, man, I just you wake up every Monday like Arnie says and hope that another one of your teammates hasn't gone down. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, there's been a few players that have picked up niggles, and fortunately, they haven't been um, too serious. So, um, it's it's great to see. You know, obviously, Harry was a, a big contributor to to what we achieved in the qualifiers, and to see you know what happened to him um, was very unfortunate. But hopefully, you know, I saw. I think he got 45 minutes for the second team um, the other day, and. and um, you know, someone like him really deserves to, you know, be in contention to, to be selected. And um, so hopefully he's, um, you know, fit and, and... Number three for you. Sorry, number three. Sorry, sorry just cut out there. Joey, you go. Yeah, sorry, Matt. There's a bit of internet gremlins. But I just wanted to ask you about one of your teammates in the Socceroos and at Melbourne City, Jamie McLaren. PK last week talked about how he's always getting in the right positions and he, that he needs to know where to be. As, as a player that's responsible for getting the ball, is that getting him the ball? Is that your experience? Yeah, uh, you know, obviously, um, Jamie's a sort of a one-of-a-kind one of player here in Australia, um, or even for the national team, I should say. Um, you know, he's a typical striker who is always there um, to score goals, and he's shown that pr- over the past few years, um, you know, n- number of golden boot winners here in, in, in the A-League. Um, and he's always there at the right time. And, and not just that, you know, he, he doesn't get many opportunities uh, every game. Um, but, you know, if anyone uh, is to be there in front of goal at that time, you, you probably want him. him. So, um, yeah. He's a he's a great player. He's, he works very hard. I think uh, off the ball he works uh, a lot harder than you know probably people notice. Um, 
and it can be a frustrating role at times. You know, he's he's playing in a position where, you know, he needs to run and press all day, and um, he probably doesn't get the ball as much as, you know, most of the other players on the field. But um, you know, he keeps his head and he knows when he gets his moment, he scores. And uh, you know, that's that's a that's a trait in itself. Um, you know, I know myself, I like to be involved as much as possible, and if I'm playing a game and I'm having 15 touches um, you know I, I can get very frustrated and I want to be involved but you know that's something that he has mentally very strong and uh, you know he's always focused for that chance to, to, to put the ball in the back of the net. Wondering too we just asked you about the, the air conditioned stadiums in, in Doha and he's spoken before about just how different they are I mean he likened it to playing on wet ceramic tiles almost and the fact that a lot of other nations might not be as experienced um, as it as you guys will be given your time there. Can you just get from a player's perspective? Can you give us an insight into just what it's like playing on the surface of those stadiums? Yeah, it's um, it's amazing because you know obviously um, in Qatar it's, it's it's fairly warm. Probably won't be as warm um, when the World Cup comes around. But you know we've obviously experienced being there at its hottest uh, in the summer, and um, you know when you're in a a good stadium with um, you know the air conditioning uh, you really don't feel the effects of the weather at all um, I just think you know you probably need to adapt to you know being in that stadium with that type of air um, which we've experienced um, with, you know training and, and camps over there um, so for us or for me personally when I you know we were there for the, the, the two knockout games um, you know, I felt adapted or I felt good, and but you know, other other nations that probably haven't experienced that might, you know, might feel an effect um, that we don't because you know we, we, we know we know what it's like. So um, it's it's quite amazing what they what they've done. I, I you know when I when I heard air conditioned stadiums, I didn't know what to expect, um, but it really is just like you know a full stadium of just cool air, um, and you don't feel the feel the weather at all. Got time for one or two more Sorry? So, sorry, I was just saying, is it, is it slippery though, like Arnie was talking about? Right. Um, yeah, it depends. I think, uh, you know, because it's so cool in there, they, you know, they obviously wet the surface to, to um, you know, have the, have the field ready for, for a game and it doesn't really dry up, so it can be slippery, but, you know, they're, I'm sure going into the World Cup, they'll have the, the surfaces top-notch. Matt, you're a sort of been there, done that. You're eyeing off another World Cup. You got guys like Marco Tilio who are you know trying to get a spot in this squad. Um, he's probably one of the ones that's been talked about. There's obviously a few boys at other clubs as well, but you play with him. How do you sort of guide him through this this period when he's trying to impress and maybe earn a spot? Eye off a first World Cup. Yeah, um, from from if I can talk from my experience when I was you know younger and you know, I, I was fortunate enough to, to go to Brazil um, I think the the biggest probably issue for him or is that you know there is so much talk about you know him potentially making it and um, I think for him the most important thing is to just put his head down and, and work and you know every opportunity he gets take it and uh, not get caught up in, in what's being said because um, you know, every player is different. Everyone takes um, you know news differently, but uh, it, can, it definitely can play with your mind. So uh, we all know what talents uh, Tilio has. Um, he's a very exciting young talent, and um, for me, the most important thing for him is just to you know take every opportunity he gets, and also um, just take out the noise and um, you know work hard.